Hi guys and welcome to today's video on differentiating e to the power of x. Yes, this is an awesome video and a continuation of our mathematical methods units 3 and 4 video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to my channel, can you do a, math is a massive, massive favour? And over there in the corner is a little doohickey to click and subscribe. Subscribers make all the difference because it means that you're out there watching and that's the best way for me to know. Otherwise, I'm sitting here a little bit lonely and depressed uh, talking to myself. So thank you very much for clicking and sending a shout out to a couple of your mates. Now, this is a continuation. We've already done differentiating in mathematical methods in a previous video. We're continuing on now having done logarithms and exponentials, yes, to differentiating e to the power of x. By the end of this video, as I say above, I want you to be able to differentiate e to the x, which is really easy by the way, to be able to know how to apply the chain rule to differentiate more complicated exponential functions, and then how to apply them to functions or questions relating to things like, you know, gradient and, and chain rule or whatever else. This really is an awesome video. Now, at the end of the day, it's important to realize that when you are differentiating, you are finding the value of the gradient of a tangent to a point. I say that over and over again. It is so, so important because if you understand that it's the value of a gradient of a tangent at a point, then any question they send, uh, throw at you later on shouldn't be overly difficult. So using the general idea that if we have f of x is equal to x to the power of n and we are going to differentiate this, then we would express that with f dashed of x, which we'd also write as y dashed, or if we wanted to use Leibniz notation, dy by dx is given by, you bring the power down and you multiply by x to the power of n minus one. So whatever the power was there before, take one away. So if we have the example, for example, y was equal to x cubed, then we would have that y dashed was equal to 3x squared. Notice I multiplied by the power and then took one off the power. And likewise, if we got more complicated and we had, oh, I don't know, 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 2. So then differentiating this, let's have y dash is equal to, well, the 3 times the 4 gives me 12x, take one off the power. Minus 3 times 2 gives me 6x, take one off the power, which is 1 and then plus one. Why would you do the plus one? Well, that's originally x to the power of one. So that would give me one times x to the power of zero. And we know that anything to the power of zero is in fact one, and one times one is one. And we know that any constant at plus two, for example, will disappear, because uh, the gradient of a constant is equal to zero. So that's basic differentiation. We then moved on to the general idea of the chain rule. And the chain rule was awesome because it allowed us to uh, differentiate complicated things. So for example, if I had y was equal to x squared plus 3 to the power of 4. Now multiplying that out would be challenging and disgusting at the best of times. So what we say is, well, okay, let's take out the complicated part there and replace it with a letter. Generally speaking, we would use the letter u. So let's say that becomes now u to the power of 4. And we have to take account that u now is equal to x squared plus 3. Now the chain rule tells us that what we can do is differentiate each of those individual parts and then multiply them together. So I now know that we have dy by du would give me 4u cubed and I would know that du by dx in that situation would give me 2x. So I've integrated, sorry, differentiated those two individual parts and what do I do now? Well, I know that dy by dx is equal to dy by du multiplied by du by dx. That's the chain rule. So dy by du, we knew was 4. Now, u cubed. We cannot put the u in here. We have to take it back and say, well, that was actually x squared plus 3, all cubed. If you put a u in, sadly, the examiners get a little upset and go, no, 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 you haven't understood, and you have got this wrong. And then we're going to multiply that by du by dx, which is just 2x. So multiplying that together, we have 8x x squared plus 3 to the power of 3. Now, having done a number of those, we then realized there was actually a shortcut, and I could have gone straight to my answer without having to do all of this chain rule. Because what we noticed was, if we look at the fact that we had x squared plus 3 inside, there's x squared plus 3, what do you notice about that 4? Well, it seemed to be the bracket. It felt like I brought the 4 down and taken one off the power, which is what differentiation was. All I needed to do then was multiply by this 2x, which turned out to be the differential of the bracket. So I could have actually gone straight to that and said y dash was equal to bring the power down, leave the bracket the same, 
take one off the power and then multiply by the differential of the bracket, that's the differential of that thing there, which gives me 2x. And that was the power and the beauty of the chain rule. Now the great news here, ladies and gentlemen, is the differentiation or the differential of y equals e to the x isn't actually that complicated, believe it or not, because if I have y is equal to e to the x, then y dashed also happens to be e to the x. Whoop, whoop. Now you can prove this, and I, it's a little beyond the scope of this video. I could do it, but there are lots more uh, sort of textbooks and uh, courses out there that will show you. But if you differentiate, if you put values of x in and differentiate anywhere along that point, you'll find that the differential is exactly the same as the original. So the great news is, the shortcut is, that when you differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x. Whoa, so how does that now work with the chain rule and stuff? Well, these questions fabulously have been extracted from the Cambridge Essential, uh, sorry, the Cambridge Mathematical Methods Units 3 and 4 textbook. Thank you, Cambridge, for allowing me to use them. So let's use some examples with some chain rule and see if there's another shortcut to be able to do this. So here is example one, find the derivative of each of the following with respect to x. So what that's really saying is just differentiate it with respect to x. So for that first example, for part a, I have y was equal to e to the 3x. Well, I'm going to say, I don't know how to differentiate that. So I'm going to say, well, let y now equal e to the u and let u equals 3x. So this is a chain rule question, right? So we now have the dy by du is equal to, well, the differential of e to the u is e to the u. Thank you very much. And we now know that du by dx is equal to 3. And do you remember what we do now? Yep, as I just said a moment ago, we would now say that dy by dx is equal to dy by du multiplied by du by dx, which is e to the power of u, well, we can't write the u, we have to substitute it back in as 3x, multiplied by 3, or just 3 e to the 3x. Well, bearing in mind we had that e to the 3x at the start, and it has appeared in my answer, all it appears that I've done is multiplied by that 3. And where did I get the 3 from? Oh yes, the differential of the power. And again, the power of this fabulous stuff is that we can differentiate the power and multiply it uh, by my original function. So if I have part b, for example, and I had uh, y is equal to e to the minus 2x, well, I could use a chain rule. And if you need to, go and do the chain rule. But I now know that my y dash is equal to the differential of this, which is minus 2, multiplied by my original function. Oh, fabulous. C, I've got e to the 2x plus 1. Again, if you want to do this using the chain rule, please, I encourage you to do it. But the rule happens again. Y is equal to the differential of the exponential power is 2, and just write e to the 2x plus 1. Now, I get very nervous using shortcuts sometimes because, sadly, people use them all incorrectly. So please make sure that you use the right shortcut in the right time. And let's just do part d for completeness. Now we have 1 over e to the 2x plus e to the 3x. Now, in this situation, this here confuses people because it's 1 over. And maybe you want to jump for the product rule, uh, or sorry, the quotient rule. No, 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 no. Just realize that when you have 1 over, you can move something on the bottom, the denominator, up to the top by making it negative. And so I end up that that's e to the minus 2x plus e to the 3x. Let's call that y. So y dash now becomes equal to, well, let's now just do this in pairs. The differential of that is minus 2 e to the minus 2x plus the differential of 3x is 3 e to the 3x. And probably because they gave me it in a fraction to start with, I'm just going to do that as minus 2 on e to the 2x plus 3 e to the 3x. Whoop! Job done. We're loving this stuff. Now, example two. Exactly the same. It just looks more complicated, but actually it really isn't. So, let's look at part e a. Sorry, so y is equal to e to the x squared. I could do this using the chain rule. I don't need to. I just know now that y dash is equal to the differential of that, which is 2x, multiplied by e to the x squared, my original function. God, this stuff is awesome. And part b, yes, you can try and confuse this, but nah, we've got you. e to the x squared plus 4x. I'm going to put that in brackets to make it clear. So y dash becomes equal to the difference of the bracket, which is 2x plus 4, close brackets, multiplied by e to the x squared plus 4x. 
Differential of exponentials is awesome. And they can go on and throw us. They can try and say, well, okay, let's get confusing. And I'm like, no, we're not gonna get confusing. We can do this. Find the gradient of the tangent. We know what that means. That means differentiate of this curve at a particular point. So when it wants to find the gradient of the tangent, be careful, it doesn't want the equation of the tangent, it just wants the physical value. So if we look at part A, if we look at part A, we have y is equal to e to the two of x, and that's plus four, right? So it's important to notice that plus four is separate. I now know that my y dashed is given by two e to the two x. The four, remember, differentiates to nothing, it disappears, and there is my differential. So therefore, when x is equal to zero, how did I know that? Because I've got zero comma five and a coordinates just code for giving me an x value and a y value. When x is equal to zero, we therefore say that y dash, which is otherwise known as m, which is the gradient of my tangent, is two e to the two times zero is zero. Well, e to the power of zero is one, and in which case that will give me a value of two. Love it, thank you very much. Part B. Uh, find the value of the gradient of the tangent to this point here. Again, because I'm finding the gradient of a tangent, I don't care about the y value. Only interested in the x value, and I've already done all the hard work here. So I know y dashed is still equal to 2e to the 2x. So y dash is equal to, let's put the value of 1 in, 2e to the 2, and we will just leave it at that. Remember, methods like your answers to be in exact values unless otherwise stated. Okay, so this looks complicated, but more it's about the language. For each of the following, first find the derivative with respect to x, and then evaluate the derivative at x equals two. Okay, given that, we've got certain conditions. Right, so part A. We've got that y is equal to e f of x. Okay, so we can now differentiate this, and we know that y dash, which is also the same as dy by dx, is equal to, well, that is my power, and I multiply by the differential of that power, so f dashed of x multiplied by e f of x. Well, it wants to know the actual value, all right? So evaluate means says find a value when x is equal to two. So we now know that x is equal to two, so we now know that dy by dx becomes f dashed of 2 times the e f of 2. Where is that information in my question? Well, do we have f dashed of 2? Oh, we do. Thank you very much. We've got f dashed of 2 is equal to 4. And we're going to multiply that by the f of 2. Or sorry, e to the power of f of 2. Well, do I know what f of 2 is? Oh, I do. It's 0. So there is e to the power of zero. So all I'm doing is pattern spotting, really. e to the power of zero is one. And so there we go. Part A works out to simply be four. Job done. And part B, we now have f of e to the x. Now, again, this is a standard trick question. Remember, when it looks complicated, take it outside. So I'm now going to say, well, let y equals f of u. I can do that. Thank you very much. And let u equals e to the power of x. So dy by du now becomes f dashed of u, and we know that du by dx is equal to, oh, e to the x, I thank you very much. So we now know that dy by dx becomes equal to f dashed of u, which we know is e to the x, multiplied by du by dx, which is e to the x. And again, they're looking for us to evaluate when the value of x equals two. So now using x equals two, we know that dy by dx is equal to f dashed of the e of two multiplied by the e of two. Well, we now need to look and go, well, do we know what the f dashed e of two is? Well, of course we do, thank you very much. It is five, and so that becomes five times e squared, or just 5e e squared. See what it is? It's just a trick. They gave you all the information in there. You just needed to know the chain rule. Okay, that's the end of this lesson for differentiating e to the power of x. Thank you so much for watching. I am, as ever, the Mass Guru, and very, very grateful for you being here and watching. If you can do me the honor, please, of subscribing by clicking that doohickey over there and telling a couple of friends, I would be deeply, deeply grateful. And the video is loading below it. Thank you for your time. I'm signing off. This is Mascaru. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.